everyone, and welcome to California Life Podcast. I'm Sergey Ivanikov, and today we have a very touchy and sensitive team. I would like to present you my good friend, Bethany Crouch. Bethany Crouch, former TV news anchor and reporter, who left her 20 years career in 2018. Since that, uh, she has a path of self-discovery, and today she's healing a present-day diagnosis of stage 3 cancer. Bethany is finding her voice again as it documents her holistic journey. Thank you very much, Bethany, for coming to us. And I would like to ask you first question. You were a TV host in the morning news for 20 years, as well as radio and print media host. So now tell us how uh, stepping away from the world of uh, mainstream media, you know, affect your lifestyle. Wow. Well, it's been a, a big turnaround. And thank you so much for having me. Sure, Beth. It's sure. great to see it's you. Our, our roles are reversed. Our pleasure and our, <laughs> yes, now <laughs> I'm you. <laughs> you are. You, lo you yes. look just like me. Thank you. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, I left TV in 2018 and I quickly had an identity crisis. If I'm not TV's Bethany Crouch, who am I? Right. What am I? What am I? What am I doing here? And then a series of of discoveries of latent childhood abuse and trauma um, really sent me deep into addiction. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to cope with the person that the trauma had made me become that I had been unaware of, and recognizing that there had been this darkness from my life that. I'd been just kind of saying, no, I'm not going to look at that. I, I just stayed positive. I stayed really, you know, focused on the future. Right. And then with the, the awareness of, of this molestation as a very young person, it just kind of broke my mind <laughs> for a minute. Like, how do I make peace with that? And so since 2018, I've very much been um, on a healing journey. Um, like healing my, my, my spirit and my mind. Right. And that has brought me to now this next chapter of healing with the stage three breast cancer diagnosis. So how do you discover first time that you have this stage three cancer? Well, you know, I was very, so part of trauma is dissociation. So part of me was outside of my body watching my life like a movie. And I mm -hmm. thought that was normal. I thought that was just normal. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I watched a documentary called Leaving Neverland mm -hmm. about men who are allegedly molested by a, a pop icon. And I saw myself reflected back in them. And they're explaining their, their experience of life, which very much reflected mine. And I was so confused, like, how, how is it possible mm -hmm. that their life reflects mine? Mm -hmm. And so that was what led me to, to digging deeper and having the, the awareness through God, asking God to show me, like, I know something happened, and then seeing all the picture, the, the puzzle pieces mm -hmm. come together. But because of that dissociation and living outside of my body, I was very detached. So I did find that there was a little lump that they found in 2018, mm -hmm. but then all the, the trauma unfolded in COVID, and I didn't go get that checked again mm -hmm. until they discovered that it was stage three breast cancer because at the time it was benign and they said, don't worry about it, but you need to keep monitoring it. But there was so much happening in my life that it just left my mind. Mm -hmm. And so I discovered that the lump seemed to have grown in November of 21. And then I got COVID and then I entered into a season of deep stress. And then I got COVID two more times in May of 22. And I had some inflammation in the breast and the nipple was inverted. And I thought, okay, well, this is obviously something mm -hmm. is, is very wrong here. Went to the doctor and a couple of biopsies did confirm, yes, stage three breast cancer. And the experience was very violent. Like the, the, the mammogram, the smashing, I, I personally believe that that actually enhanced the cancer. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a very traumatizing experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I've since learned, and now my new modality is working with um, something called, um, oh, it's so new, new to me, I, the name is out of my mind, but it's where you are laying flat and you're submersed in water. And they actually have the ability to get 
far more detailed images in a non-invasive, non-toxic way mm -hmm. that doesn't harm the breast, that isn't sticking a needle in the breast. And so that's the new way that I'm documenting. I see. And so that's that's how it it came in in June of 22. June 22. What kind of treatment uh, options were available to you at this time? Well, they they really wanted to to hit it hard, mm -hmm. uh, and you know I had doctor after doctor like looking at me just like you're so young, you're so beautiful, right? You need to to to, to do this. Yes. And they wanted a, a lot of chemo, and they wanted a double mastectomy, and they wanted radiation, a lot of radiation. And I just, I, it didn't feel right to mm -hmm. me personally. I just, I couldn't make peace with it. I felt so um, at odds with myself. And there was a lot of fear, a lot of fear from the medical industry, a mm -hmm. lot of fear from the doctors that if I don't do this, like I will die. Yeah. And so I, there was, I succumbed to that fear in, in November of 22 and I sat with chemo just one time and though I did well with it because I'd been in a fasted state leading in and fasting and chemo are, are they go very, very well together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that one time took all my hair, which wasn't a problem. I didn't care about that, but I, I just, it resonated in my body that it wasn't my truth. And so at that time, my friends, Brooke Preston, who she formerly had the, the Green Boheme restaurant, an award-winning raw vegan chef, and then also she, um, she really is more of someone who comes alongside people in their healing journeys. Mm -hmm. She teaches people about how to take a, a holistic approach to their mm -hmm. life. Um, she and her, her, her then love partner, um, Josh Petak, who now they're they're more business partners, but they, Josh has a, a five acre five acre organic farm in Loomis, mm -hmm. and they just said we invite you to come and and recover from the experience Toxics, yeah. with chemo. Right. So I came, and then they started. Brooke just gave me some things to read, and as I'm reading through these things, realizing like oh the approach with chemo is that it annihilates the bodies, it annihilates everything in the body, and then you rebuild after. Right. Whereas there's another approach that builds up the immune system so the immune system can activate. Because mm -hmm. what we found is that I was severely malnourished. I thought I was well nourished. I thought I was doing all the right things. I thought I was living an anti-cancer life. Mm -hmm. But what I wasn't considering was the toxicity in my mind. Right. What had happened from the childhood who I became in the face of that trauma, the dissociation and the ways that I was both operating as, you know, the truth of my soul, like a very joyful, loving, supportive, generous person. And then also there was this other part of me that was like not the truth of my soul, that was more the egoic nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in, in recognizing that, um, I, I realized, oh, you know, there is a way to go about doing this where I don't have to cause more trauma. I've already been through so much trauma. Right. And basically, I, I said, you know, I, I haven't been working. I've been living off my, my retirement, trying to just, like, really figure out what I'm going to do next. And Josh said, come on in. I, I believe in you. I believe in the holistic process. I will support you. And so Brooke has been coming alongside me as my healing doula. Josh has like, just generously been donating his home and support through supplementation. And that's been my path. Mm -hmm. So thanks God we have friends, you know, like Josh. I, it, I mean, it, it was it was an answer to prayer. Right. Because I, I was praying to God, I need help. I can't do this by myself. I don't know. I don't know how to do this. And at that same time, Brooke had been praying to God, I don't have a diagnosis, mm -hmm. but I know that there are powerful remedies in Mother Nature that can support people in healing themselves holistically mm -hmm. and giving their body what they need to heal all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. She's like, but I don't ha I, God, tell me what to do next. Right. And so within a matter of weeks, we connected. We'd both been praying that prayer, and it was mm. like, weirdly an answer to, mm -hmm. I, I feel like they're my angels. Right. 
And so it's been a, it's been a real blessing to be walking with them through yeah. this. So, uh, any other friends you were seeking support from during this time? Well, it's been interesting because you know my approach has been a bit, a bit triggering for people, and so I've actually lost people mm. who have said, "Well, I don't want to watch my friend die." Yeah, same. And I'm like, well, do I look like I'm dying to you? Mm -hmm. I've never felt better. I mean, yes, I'm thin because I'm on a juicing diet. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm on day 19 of a 21-day water fast. But... So instead I, of helping you, people turn around from you? That's what you're saying? Well, or? I think that they were protecting themselves. Mm. They were afraid. So they didn't want a negative emotions or... They, they just stepped away because I, I needed... I, it was critical and mm -hmm. is critical that when you're dealing with something like this, right. well, one, that you're trusting your intuition. That's critical. And two, that you're surrounded with positivity, that I believe 100% in what I'm doing and I am focused, laser focused on, on I am healed. Right. Now it's just a matter of removing, like the, the tumor just needs to dissolve through all of the practices that mm -hmm. I'm doing, through all the modalities mm -hmm. that are rather unconventional, but I believe the future of medicine. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so any challenge, any other challenges you met during your journey? Well, um, yeah. <laughs> Probably you had a lot. <laughs> yeah, you know, transitioning away from food, um, breaking the, the construct of if I don't eat, I'll die, moving away from that and moving right. to 13 juices a day and really just deeply nourishing my cells with chlorella, spirulina, kamut, an ancient, an ancient grain, all mm. organic, everything mm -hmm. organic, carrot, beet giving my body a chance to replenish the stores that I didn't realize that were running on empty right. and then supplementing, especially with mushrooms. Mushrooms are a big part of my journey. Turkey tail, mm. reishi. Mm. I have a very good friend. We can talk about him later, but he, he grows organic mushrooms locally and his mushrooms have been so supportive. Brandon is uh, an angel as well. That's, that's the thing. I feel like, yes, I have this diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And God is just dropping angels into my life left and right. Like right. people are just showing up and they're like, how can I support you? How can I love you? And I think, Sergey, that's the, the biggest piece for me. Mm -hmm. Because in what happened to me as a child, I closed my heart. I didn't know I did, mm -hmm. but I blocked my heart and I said, I won't be hurt again. Mm -hmm. So I didn't allow love in and I didn't allow love out. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really deeply allowing myself deep intimacy. And it's no surprise to me that the tumor is in the left breast, nice covering the heart. Mm -hmm. And so to me, this is very much, it's an energetic thing that I'm dealing with because cancer is a density. Mm -hmm. So there's a density in the breast that needs to be flushed out. And as I'm working with you know, frequency medicine, for example, terahertz frequency, the frequency of stem cells. I'm wearing this microcurrent machine mm -hmm. from my doctor programmed to, right now it's detox support. So I wear these, these paddles that are transmitting, a, I can't even feel it. It's a mm -hmm. microcurrent of supporting my system and detoxing. And then there's others for post-traumatic stress or pituitary health, peace and calm for encouraging cancer cells to flush out of the system. Mm -hmm. So as I work with these different modalities, including the energetic enhancement system, um, the, the energy, the energy enhancement system over in Gold River, the EE system, um, the Radiant Light Healing Center, those ladies also angels from God that have just mm -hmm. dropped into my life. That's the, the scalar frequency, which also supports the body in having mm -hmm. the ability to heal itself. Okay. Um, so spending a lot of time in all of these different frequencies is allowing me to raise up to the top of my life, like cream rises to the top. I feel like I'm rising up so that I can have a higher perspective mm -hmm. to see the places where maybe there's still some shadow hiding, where I'm unaware of a way that 
a, pre a previous coping strategy is still pulling my strings mm -hmm. that is leading me to addictive behaviors. Yes. Reach, wanting to reach for food, wanting to reach for cannabis, wanting to reach for alcohol or sex or shopping or anything to distract me mm -hmm. from being present with what is. Mm -hmm. And I believe that as I, again, rise to the top, have this big vantage point of my life, that I'm able to break up the density because I'm breaking up the density in my mind simultaneously and the mm -hmm. mind and the body are deeply connected. Right. And that's, I think, you know, we've, we're spending, oh my gosh, we're raising how much money to, to cure cancer. And I think there's another question that we need to be asking is, how do we heal the mind? Right. Because the mind and the body are one. Mm -hmm. So if the mind is thinking toxic thoughts, even if it's in the subconscious, mm -hmm. we might not even be aware. I wasn't right. aware of how much I hated myself. I wasn't aware of like almost a death wish. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was deeply regretful of, of many of my life choices. Mm -hmm. I was, I, I realized that I had been harming myself by harming another. Mm -hmm. So anytime I harmed another, actually that harm was coming back to me. I see. And so, um, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. You did, yes. <laughs> Aside from medical treatment, what other holistic approaches helped you in dealing with cancer? Yeah, so I mean, definitely the, the frequency medicine and, and the juicing and the supplementation, homeopathy. Mm -hmm. um, something that probably is, like it might sound a little bit squeamish, but again, I believe that we're, we have the ability to break the constructs. I work with five daily coffee enemas mm. and that is about, so a coffee enema is a natural dialysis mm -hmm. because the blood moves through the body every three minutes. And so to hold the coffee in the colon for 15 mm -hmm. minutes is, is five dialysis experiences. So if I'm, do, I'm, if I'm doing it five times a day, I have 25 right. dialysis. So I'm cleansing the blood as the, the toxicity of the tumor releases mm -hmm. into the blood, I'm flushing it out. And then as I mentioned, um, I couldn't go on the water fast at the beginning mm -hmm. because I, w I was malnourished. So we've been getting me up to a place where I'm healthy and stable, where I have the ability to, I have all the minerals I need because we're deeply depleted as a population, deeply depleted in minerals mm -hmm. because our soil is deeply depleted. So we mm -hmm. take in produce that's missing minerals. We take in produce that's missing so much nourishment that our ancestors experienced. Mm -hmm. So now that we got me to a place where I was capable of going on water, we started it. I started at 10 days. That was my intention. And, you know, part of this, you know, I talked about dissociation and coming back into the body. So somatic work, it's somatic is, is body. So learning to come back into my body and my somatic educator, Padma, who's just also an angel, you know, she asked me this question as we're having our first meeting and she's like, how's your back? Where's your back? Can you feel your back? I couldn't, I couldn't feel my back. She's like, can, can you feel your lungs as you breathe? Mm. And I was like, oh, and that just those two simple questions. I'm like, oh, oh, there I am. Oh, hi. Hi. I'm in my body. Wow. Okay. So that was revolutionary. And that was a few months ago. And so learning how to be in embodied, learning how to actually be in my body and listen deeply to the body's wisdom, because I wouldn't be able to be doing this water fast without the body wisdom, because mm -hmm. now I'm learning the language of my body. So how I talk to my body is I say something that is true, like my name is Bethany, mm -hmm. and I feel like a pulse on the front side of my body, my body mm -hmm. confirming yes. So then I, I, I ask a question. Mm -hmm. and the body either confirms with a pulse yes or I feel nothing. Mm. And so that's how I'm tracking myself. Um, and it's been profound because also what I'm doing is healing the link between the mind and the body because the, the mind became abusive of the body mm -hmm. without even realizing it because the mind would tell the body what to do. The body just does it right. even if the body doesn't. Like it's not for the body. It's not the body's truth, but mm -hmm. the mind is saying, do this. And I, I powered my way through life. I mean, I, 
I burned the candle at both ends of the sticks for decades. That's mm. how I lived. I was nonstop. I was, I, I didn't know that I was on a trajectory for, for this, but I was mm -hmm. because I, I lived at such a high, I, I just was, I was running for burnout mm. and then having that crash in 2018 coming into, oh, I'm not who I thought I was, then who am I? was just like, whoa, okay, mm -hmm. whole reframe. So now the water fasting is a, a, it's a joy to be able to trust my body and listen. And, and, and I've been checking in, are we doing 21 days? And it's been, it's been continuing to confirm for me. Yes, we're on 21 days. So mm -hmm. Saturday I'll break my water fast and I'll do it very, very gently. Mm -hmm. And I'll go back to my only juicing because when you're doing a fast, especially of this nature, it's critical right. to ease in with juice, which is why I'm having such an easy time because I was already juicing for, you know, since November. So I, I was ready. My system was clean. Mm -hmm. And also all those coffee enemas, my system's clear. Mm -hmm. And with enemas, it's very important to, you're shutting the body's digestive system down because the fire of the digestion is so, it, it takes so much energy. So I'm allowing all of that energy to go to healing. Mm -hmm. So as you shut down the body's digestive system in a fast like this, if there's any trapped waste still in your colon, mm -hmm. then your body can't do the detox work that it needs to do. So that's why I, I, that's one of the reasons I think that enemas are so supportive, especially on any kind of fast, but really for mm -hmm. anyone, I mean, to start your day with an enema, like nothing is better than to feel clean and clear because it affects the mind, like the gut and the mind are, are, are very linked. So what we, dis what we discovered, what my doctor and I discovered is that I'm getting into this deeper layer because since I'm so clean, I'm getting into this deeper layer of shedding like the old stuff from the colon that has been blocking my ability to mm -hmm. take in nourishment. Like think about a pool that's never been cleaned right. and it's corroded on the sides yeah. and it takes like harsh chemicals to yeah. get all those that off. Mm -hmm. And so basically what I've been doing is preparing myself to flush all that out so that I'm able to uh, finally absorb the nutrition I need. Mm -hmm. And what I believe is further catalyze this healing opportunity. Okay, I got it. Bev, uh, tell us, are there any misconceptions or stigma surrounding cancer uh, that you would like to address? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> For me... <laughs> Probably a lot, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, what I have found is that there is a lot of hatred for cancer. Like, as soon as you tell someone that you're navigating cancer, it's, oh, F cancer, I hate cancer, cancer is the worst. Mm -hmm. And everyone wants to call the, the experience a battle. Mm -hmm. You're at war. Right. No, no, I mean, not me. Mm -hmm. I am not at war. I am in a process of harmonizing my system. Okay. I'm talking to the cancer and I'm saying, I love you. Thank you. Thank you for being in my body to wake me up. Because like, it's challenged you, right? Yeah, because I was, I was numb. Mm -hmm. I was numb. I was using substances mm -hmm. to just try to, like, not have to be present in this reality because mm -hmm. this reality was so painful for me. And now the experience with tum the tumor and cancer is, oh, I want to be alive. Mm -hmm. I want to, I, 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 I now feel inspired by myself, which is actually what I needed mm -hmm. to activate myself. Okay. Because so something happens, the body is its own pharmacy. For example, if you're on a roller coaster, and you feel exhilarated and excited, mm -hmm. the body is releasing hormones that are anti-cancer. Mm -hmm. that, that if you're going into that with a gratitude and a joy, like, oh, this is so fun, right. the body actually releases a chemical that is cancer fighting. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're on that same roller coaster and you're in terror, the body's releasing cortisol and all these mm -hmm. stress hormones that are cancer inducing, like fear, for example, right. cancer inducing. So this is the problem with the way we approach cancer. Someone goes in, they get the diagnosis, and then what is it? It's fear, right. it's all fear. You have to do this and you have to do it now, yes. and if you don't, you'll die. Yeah. Whoa, like where's the space? And no life, huh? Where's the space right. to just like right. absorb and take a minute and say, mm -hmm. and so what I think it's important for people to know is, 
ask questions. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to ask questions. You have the ability to say no. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to say, I'm going to find a different way. Mm -hmm. Like you, doctor, thank you for your wisdom and thank you for sharing. And also like, okay, you have your perspective and now I need to go and I need to be with myself. I need to talk to God or okay. however you communicate with the divine. Yes. And, and find out what your own personal mm -hmm. truth is and ask your body, like, what's for me? What mm -hmm. is for me? Chemo is for some people. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And also, it's, it, it's not for everyone. And yeah. so there, there are options. And so the stigma around, I, just, I think that we have an ability to shift the, the language around mm -hmm. cancer and have it not be so, like, anti and hatred and anger. And, mm -hmm. Because, like, well, all of those emotions are what got me into the this like repressing those emotions is what created this mm -hmm. repressing all of my anger repressing all of my suppress suppressing all of like the, the, the hurt and the fear that i didn't want to feel mm -hmm. that's how i got in this so i don't want more fear in my body right. that's only going to perpetuate it's only going to activate mm -hmm. so remaining in a state of wow i wake up in the morning and i'm exhilarated i'm excited i'm like wow okay how is my journey going to unfold today what a blessing. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful I'm alive. This day is the day and right. I'm here. Thank you, God. Wow, this is incredible. Taking that perspective over one of, oh. Another I'm, bad day. Yeah, and I'm in fear. Well, those are two different realities mm -hmm. and we all have the power of perspective. Yeah. We choose our perspective. Someone else doesn't choose that right. for us. So that's my next question. How was your faith or spirituality played a role in your journey with this cancer? Huge, huge. Because, you know, in the, in the light of what happened to me as a child, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that I'd kind of broken up with authority figures. I mm -hmm. broke up with God. I kind of, I broke up with my family in a way. Like I just put walls up all around myself. And then mm -hmm. I went into a profession that allowed me to be on a pedestal so that I could keep further walls around mm -hmm. myself where I could engage with people from a perspective of I'm asking them questions, but they're not asking me questions. Right. And that felt very safe to me. Mm -hmm. And in 2022, before the diagnosis, I reached a, a low point, a very low point, where I was not going to take my own life, but I really, really depressed. Didn't want to be here anymore. I just couldn't. I, I just, I couldn't even believe how my life had ended up. I'm like, how did I get here? Obviously, I'm not fit to make choices. Obviously, mm. I'm not fit to make any choices for my own life because it hasn't worked out. So God, I give you my life. I surrender to you completely. You're in charge. I submit. I'm on my knees. I'm on my face. I'm yours. And all I ask is that you use my life for good to bless, mm -hmm. to bless others. Just use my life for good. And within a matter of, it was a matter of months, I had the diagnosis. And I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. God did not give me cancer. Mm -hmm. But I feel that there was something inside of me that already knew that there was, there was, a turning point in my life coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So God, my connection to, to Christ, to Jesus, my connection mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit has been instrumental in this mm -hmm. in choosing and choosing to walk in. You know, I think that our brother Jesus taught mm -hmm. us what it is to forgive radical forgiveness. He's forgiving those who are killing him on the cross radical forgiveness, radical love, radical peace. Mm -hmm. I think his messages have been, you know, corrupted over time by the ego. Mm -hmm. um, egoic structures have said that the, the way of Christ is war. We must fight. And the, I, the, he, he came in peace. So I think that's, that is like very wrong, but the, the pathway of radical forgiveness has been a critical element for me in this journey because I had to forgive my grandfather and what he did to me. And I had to forgive the other traumas that happened in junior high and college and the people who, who committed those against me. I had to see them as innocent children of God who were acting out their own trauma. Mm -hmm and that they were hurting themselves by hurting me. 
Right. And to see that allowed me to access forgiveness for myself, which is what I needed. I needed to forgive myself for who I became in the face. I'm in. So God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. Big, I, big help. Yes. I, uh, the biggest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, what advice uh, you would give to someone who was recently diagnosed with cancer and yeah, going through similar journey? Thank you. Um, like, uh, you know, I just really to to take a breath, mm -hmm. to take a beat, listen to or read PhD cancer researcher mm -hmm. uh, Kelly Kelly Taylor. Mm -hmm. um, she did radical remission and radical mm -hmm. hope. She mm -hmm. is the producer of the documentary Heal, and she. D she, she, she studied the anomalies. Mm -hmm. She studied the, the cancer patients who took a different approach or the medical industry failed and they said they basically sent the patient home to die mm -hmm. and what those people did to have a full remission, radical remission, mm -hmm. what happened? How did they create life in the face of, of certain death? Mm -hmm. And what she found is there are 10 things that every that every cancer thriver does has in common. And they are a, a beautiful list and of which I'm doing every single thing, mm -hmm. um, which is, you know, radically changing your diet, developing a, a connection with God, relying on support from your community and your friends, having a reason to live, finding purpose, um, the, incorporating um, exercise, mm -hmm. having exercise be a daily part of your routine. I roller skate. Right. I do Bikram yoga, not while I'm on the water fast, right. but I have, I have the vitality to do the things that I love the most mm -hmm. that are really joyful for me. Like my little girl inside is like, yes, we're roller skating. It's <laughs> the best. Have fun, yeah. play and supplementation. Turn to supplementation, organic. Organic mm -hmm. is critical. And then taking taking stock of all the, the, the toxic chemicals in, right. in the house and on the body. We don't realize. Yep. Just because something's sold to us in the store doesn't mean it's good for yeah, us. I agree. Yeah, we have to know, like look at the label. We need organic, we need natural products mm -hmm. on the body. The skin is the largest organism. Are we applying lotions and creams that are mm -hmm. toxic? Mm -hmm. Are we eating produce that's been sprayed with pesticides what's going on with the gut glyphosate is a huge issue yeah. glyphosate destroys the the lining of the gut and we have leaky gut we have so many issues and what i'm finding is that to draw awareness mm -hmm. to draw awareness to the ways that we have unintentionally co-created an environment for a disease or cancer to thrive mm -hmm. To acknowledge that is empowering. The doctors were like, don't blame, blame yourself. I'm like, well, I'm not blaming myself. I'm empowering myself because I'm finding all the ways in my life that I did a disservice to myself mm -hmm. that I didn't know because I was just operating from an old construct. I was just operating without thinking. Mm -hmm. And now, now that I have awareness, so educate educate there's a lot of great education out there brooke preston is an amazing educator mm -hmm. take her course she's fantastic she can walk alongside you and teach you how to heal um it's it's possible and so if someone gets a diagnosis to just know that no two paths are the same no two diagnoses are the same mm -hmm. and to take a breath and and you don't have to make a decision in that moment go home mm -hmm. Be with your loved ones, pray, breathe, do something you love, and get clear with yourself on what your truth is. Mm -hmm. Any recommendations uh, to people who supporting a loved one or friend that going through this cancer <coughs> journey? Um, went down the wrong pipe. <coughs> yes. If you're supporting someone who's going through any kind of diagnosis, positivity, joy, love. Mm -hmm. We're love. We're love. We're created in love's image. We Amen. are love. Love. To allow myself to give and receive love has been the most 
important medicine on this journey for me. Best medicine, probably. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so if someone you know is going through something, to give them the space to do it their way mm -hmm. and just love them through it and just say, I support you. I see you. I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Recognize that if you're triggered because their choices don't al align with yours, mm -hmm. okay, so what? So what? They're not you. <laughs> Let them yes. do it their way and just love them through it if you have the capacity. And if you don't, if you're going to be a dark cloud, then step away. Then do the, do the right thing and step away. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the people in my life who said, like, I'm going to be a dark cloud. i got to step away from you because <laughs> I love you and I don't want to watch you die. And I'm like, well, we believe two different things. So right. let's circle back mm -hmm. <laughs> later on. I'll do me. You do you. <laughs> what is, uh, Beth, your uh, hopes and aspirations for your future? I see I, again like I, I I told God like I'm yours use me so I'm I'm talking to God like how do you want me to to, to walk right. how do you want me to be so I see myself as someone who is serving as a catalyst for asking questions mm -hmm. to ask questions to question everything to question what we believe to question mm -hmm. why we believe something is it because it's our truth or because it was programmed into mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. we have the freedom we have mm -hmm. the right to ask questions right and i um wow i just lost my train of thought this is 19 days on water <laughs> no problem no problem <laughs> which take, is bad. Take like, your I've, breath. <laughs> I've had pr like pristine mental clarity on this fast mm -hmm which has been amazing, like very low energy, but pristine mental clarity. And then every once in a while, my train of thought just, it just drifts away. So your, your question was? Don't worry, don't worry. Circle me back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, my question is what you can say to people who's actually taking care of loved ones who's going through similar diagnosis? Yeah, and, and to, yeah, to be the love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and uh, I know Beth, so you were, um, surrounded with tons of people uh, hosting community events, hosting TV programs, radio programs. You are editor of several publications. So um, right now, probably when you're going through this journey, you don't want to just uh, focus on yourself and your close network. You probably want to do something else. You want to do create some events. Is there anything, any activities you plan in the nearest future? Okay, I love it because it just brought me back <laughs> because your question was asking me about like what I see in, in my future. And so right. I'll answer both. I see, I see myself as an inspirational speaker. I see okay. myself on stage speaking about my journey okay. and allowing it to serve as catalyst. I, my, my dear friend, Jorge, who I met in yoga, um, Avi Productions, he, he has come on and is documenting my journey. So I see us creating something that will serve as, as um, inspiration for those. We are very much aligned in desiring to connect people with the information on how they can mm -hmm. prevent a diagnosis. Okay. The steps they can do right now to make sure their kidneys are functioning properly, to mm -hmm. make sure the system is clean, to just all of the things. Like mm -hmm. we, so we see ourselves creating some programs around mm -hmm. all of that, okay. which is exciting to me because I get to go back to my roots. You know, I, I started anchoring the morning news when I was nine. So I've never not been in front of the camera. These last five years have been like, like once again, like, who am I? So I feel like I'm, I'm finding my voice, my voice, my mm -hmm. authentic voice. Mm -hmm. And so I, I see, I, I see a way to support those who, um, desire to heal a, a variety of different things, um, through, you know, maybe less, less known methods and there is a beautiful nonprofit, a 501c3 called Elysian Sanctuary that supports artists in their mm -hmm. journeys by placing artists at different residencies. There's Arizona and then they ha they're based in Pennsylvania. So they have several there. And then Loomis, where I am at the organic farm is coming on. And so we see this whole holistic, this wholeness center, mm -hmm. supporting people and in coming into wholeness 
And so creating avenues to raise money for people who can't afford the care, because, you know, insurance doesn't cover this. Right. And so how do you afford it? How yeah. do you afford it? Well, it's a drop in the bucket compared to if you're going to go the, the medical system yes. route, but it's still all out of pocket. It's a lot. It's a lot for people to invest. So creating a pathway for access It's your phone? Oh, that's my alarm. Oh, alarm. Okay, you need to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a very joyful alarm. <laughs> yes. And uh, Bev, uh, I heard that you created uh, in the nearest future event and people can, I, I think you have several seats left. It's available yes. for your special concert. Tell us yeah. more about this. So it's called... Um, the Life Ignited Benefit. Okay. And it's going to be happening at the Organic Farm in Loomis. Mm -hmm. And my friend Brandon, the mushroom cultivator, has a band called Peniel Noir. They're a reggae band. They're performing. My dear friend Louisa Hodge, formerly Hodge, now she's Horn. She's flying in from Colorado. She used to be a reporter and weather anchor at Fox 40. Okay. Now she's found her voice as a musician. Mm. And so she's coming in and she's going to play. My friend Clement is going to play. Nice. Uh, you know all of these friends. <laughs> all of these friends coming together. Yeah, it's great. Um, just like you, coming uh -huh. together. Um, my new friend, Rich, who you introduced me to, yes. is bringing his amazing icy truck and his fantastic alkaline water. I have had 10 cases of delicious, amazing wine donated from friends. Okay. Um, uh, so it's going to be concert, it's going to be action. What else we, people will enjoy this event? Yeah, well, it will be an evening of connection. Connection. An evening of connection and just People who care, right? Enjoying, people who would like to do something. Enjoying one another. Enjoying. And it's very intimate. I mean, we can only mm -hmm. have about 100 people there, so it's going yeah. to be very small. Right, right. So my intention is for it to be a loving, joyful experience. My mm. friend Rachel is bringing her pop-up shop purpose. Mm. So 25% of sales will go back to, to the event. I have um, several friends, Micah Crandall Bear, Rafael Delgado, Shreda yeah. Fur, Kim Squalia, donating Yenny Zhu, donating pieces that they made for the auction. I so see. I'm going to have that on display along with Great. some fantastic jewelry from my jewelry maker friends. Very good. Just um, Ebony London and Pam Tui. I am I'm so excited. And then, oh, Omona Vie, uh, she is Tula and Bloom. All of them have donated jewelry. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had, you know, the SAC co op step in and Rayleigh's and Cordy Brothers just donated wine for the nice. auction as well. So it's going to be. Um, Daryl Corey will come or not yet? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know if Daryl's going to come, him. <laughs> but he donated some magnums. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> for the online auction, so the online auction will be happening in tandem. Okay. Um, it'll happen like right before the event and then after, and then also there's some really beautiful experiences that people can bid on. Um, a week stay at a beautiful condo in Incline. Nice. That Josh donated and Tafel. then. Mm -hmm. My friend Brandon Burkhouse of Big Boy Mushrooms is donating a VIP experience to tour his mushroom mm -hmm. facility okay. and then um, be able to learn how to cultivate your own mushrooms and he'll, he'll send you home with culinary mushroom kits. That's great. So that's a great experience. Um, Hannah so B is donating tickets to her upcoming fashion show mm -hmm. at the Kempton Sawyer. Um, so people can join your particular event. That's uh, one way how they can support your journey, right? Yeah. Second, they can participate in action. And action, not only at event, it's going to be online as well, right? The auction, yeah. So everybody can join us on this action online, correct? Oh, yeah. And oh, uh, Doug Link and Marcus Allen donated a VIP experience at their axe throwing. Axe throwing. Yeah, I know. That's a great place. I love it. Yeah. He said, you, you need to come experience it. I'm like, that sounds like a great way to get out. We need, we need to ask him for IMAX movie experience for like big party. Ooh. That's another great thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving me ideas. Yes. Doug, are you listening? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Doug, we're calling to you. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So, and what else? How, how else people can participate in this? Mm. 
Can, can your friends who you supported for your 20 years of professional experience on TV as an anchor um, just write check to you or make a credit card donation to your website or do yes. you have something like this? Yes, yes. And because we're partnered with Elysian Sanctuary, mm -hmm. because they're, I, I, they brought me on as the resident artist at the Luma, the uh, inaugural resident artist at the Loomis Estate because I'm documenting my journey for public consumption. Um, so it, it's a tax write-off. So it's, it's a 501c3 yes. project, yes. and people can donate tax Yes, exactly, yeah. which is such a gift. Um, so blessed. So how they can find this website, or how they can go to you? Yeah, bethanycrouch.com. Oh, it's easy, bethanycrouch.com. Yeah, very easy. And easy then also uh, Venmo Bethany888, just okay. very simple. It's a little picture of a purple flower. Um, and the money that we're raising will go, yes, to supporting my, my journey and my supplementation. Um, the way that we're, we're doing, it's about $4,000 a month. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're working to, to raise funds to continue, for me to be, con be able to continue what I'm doing. And on top of that, we really desire to, to catalyze this into something that we can create a, a, a wellspring of wealth Mm -hmm. to invite people into the property to heal holistically. And and knowledge, to, education. To be able to, education, right. to be able to, um, yeah, I mean, even just like to have, to have a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And so it's all in the very beginning phases. Okay. And that's part of, you know, I said earlier, part of the importance of this experience is inspiring myself. And so I feel inspired by my journey and I feel inspired by getting to, to share it with others. Mm -hmm. And every time I connect with someone personally and I, I help them or they see through me rather, I'm just serving as a mirror. They see themselves through me and there's a pathway for them that possibly they couldn't see previously, mm -hmm. but because I'm sharing my story and now like their eyes are open to a different way. It serves as like this now, oh, curiosity, like, oh, there's, there's another way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Beth, for sharing your experience and your journey. Yeah. Uh, we will pray for you, for your recovery. Yeah. We would love to support your event and personally attend your oh, good, please. You concert have to come. And, have a fantastic and fundraiser. Time. Yes, and we will work with our friends and ask our viewers uh, to help uh, to uh, create any donation items or just to buy some action items from uh, BethanyKrausch.com. Yeah, uh, so we'll have the we'll have the auction site linked there, and a special shout out to my friend Paul from Sacto Mofo, okay. who's donating a taco truck. Thank you. We're going to have tacos. Yes. I just, it's going to be, a, we're going to be eating our way through the night with all kinds mm -hmm. of deliciousness. And most important thing, it's not only one day event. People can continue to support you and this website, right? It's a bearfunnycrouch.com. Absolutely. Correct? Absolutely. And that will, you know, right now, Oh, and the website designer just m messaged me this morning and is donating a $5,000 package to Thank the you. auction um, to create from scratch a website for someone. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, it's really yeah. exciting. And my friends over at EE are also donating um, 10 sessions wow. to be immersed in the scalar frequency. And that's that's a whole other conversation. The frequencies, I, I will have to have another conversation about. So that if medicine. people would like to call you, do you have numbers they can reach you and maybe share some ideas or donation, make donation or do yeah. you want Yeah, the best way to reach me is bethanycrouch.com. Dot com, our, well, website? Yeah, on the, on the website. Okay. And um, they're actually on, so through the auction site, there'll be a way to connect. To connect. Message, okay. Yeah, to wait, a way to connect and mm -hmm. on the bethanycrouch.com um, okay. will also be a way to connect with me. So if you want to send messages of support or you have ideas, um, questions. You are welcome. Please yeah, participate. Be active. And thank you very much, uh, thank our you. viewership. Thank you, thank Bethany. You, thank you. And see you next time on our next program, California Live Podcast. I'm Sergey Ivanikov, and our guest is Bethany Crouch. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you.